Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids, and I'm really excited to show you this video here today. Um, if you guys missed it, I did a collaboration with MTG Jedi. Uh, I'm, it's going live actually uh, within one hour of when I'm recording this video. So that will be up live on the channel and on his channel. And make sure you watch it because we were talking about our most underrated champions for Hydra. And there's a lot of very spicy picks, a lot of very cool picks in there. So it's the video to watch if you want to get ahead of the curve. Well, in the Dark Elf section of that video, I chose Lanicus. Uh, appropriate with her name, Lanicus the Chosen. She was my chosen pick for underrated Dark Elf champion. And I had so much fun making that video with MGG Jedi, actually, that I said, you know what? I sat down then that evening. Uh, it Well, didn't say I was in bed watching some YouTube. And I said, I'm doing it. We're doing it. We are rebuilding her and we're putting her into Hydra and she was extremely impressive. So let me show you what we did with her today. So her A1, Chosen's Touch. This is very important. Attacks one enemy, puts a continuous heal buff on this champion for one turn if the attack is critical. And what this is going to enable us to do is really cool. She can actually be a very consistent tank for that head of mischief because she's constantly giving herself continuous heals. Continuously, one might say, uh, if we build her with enough crit. Now, we do have to be careful in terms of affinity and choosing our target. If she hits a red affinity head and doesn't crit, no continuous heal, your mischief tanking can go out the window. But yeah, very, very useful. Now, the big thing that makes her then an attractive, so she can be a mischief tank with this A1. She can do it, but why would you want her? It's the A2 that makes her so powerful. Four turn cooldown here, companions of fate team up with three random allies to attack a single enemy. The allies joining the attack will use their default skills and fills the turn meter of all allies by 30% and increases all ally buffs by one turn. So what we have here is just a fantastic move. Number one, the damage you get out of that ally attack does add up. Also giving you really good and consistent turn meter boost. And then increasing all ally buffs, again, it's the potential to extend some of her continuous heals, especially we combo one of our masteries with it, which is giving us a chance to, again, stack that duration even higher. It's You're going to see the team I put her in. We've got some really valuable buffs on longer cooldowns that we really want to increase. Uh, it just makes your team safer, more consistent. And yeah, it just adds up to a bunch of damage from your team with the turn meter and the ally attack. Really nice. Now, the fun thing is her A3, we're actually not going to use this at all. It is an option. You can potentially use this if you need to. Increase crit rate, increase attack. This will obviously add a good chunk of damage to your team. And especially if you don't have increased attack for your team, there's lots of champions that you'd run with her that you would want this on. However, Basically, this books to a 50% chance of an extra turn. Now, that extra turn for our purposes here today is actually bad because we want her to be a mischief tank. We want her to have the most buffs. Whenever you take extra turns, you run through your buffs quicker. They fall off quicker. Uh, and that's bad. We don't want that to happen. Now, you could take this same build and you could run her with this. Uh, again, the only thing that I think is very important is you still need to build her with enough resistance to tank mischief because she can end up with a bunch of continuous heals on herself. And if that gets stolen, you can have a really bad time. So you need to be very careful. Uh, but for today, we're turning this off. Let me show you how we built her. So how do we build her? We have built her like this, guys. So the important things that we've got, I actually had got too much crit rate. I simply don't have almost any reflex gear in my account. It was tricky to get her like this. I had to actually steal gear off my cold heart. Yeah, the cold heart that I use like for speed running loads of dungeons. So it's an issue, but giving her 100% crit rate just to guarantee that continuous heal every single time. We have her worth 452 resistance. I'd like it to be a little bit higher, but this is pretty much bang on good enough for hard Hydra. You could get away with it even in Brutal and Nightmare but you're getting a little bit risky there. You'd rather be more up around 500, or at the very least, you're gonna to want to bring in something like a Geomancer with decreased accuracy A1 and with her ally attack, basically decrease accuracy A1s or consistent decrease accuracy to make it safe for Nightmare or Brutal. Uh, and that's it. And then we've got her good speed, two, three, four as well. And that reflex set, this is kind of the crucial thing. 40% chance to reduce a random skill cooldown by one turn. This is why, this is very important on her because she has a big cooldown on her A2. Four turns, four turns. 
it's the only move that we're using which means that every time she gets a turn, Reflex has that chance, a good chance to take it down. It adds up to a lot more of these A2s over the course of the fight, and that's a lot more turn meter, that's a lot more buffs, and it's a lot more damage just for your team in general. So that's what we're going for. Now, in terms of accessories, I'd actually recommend, I, ooh, I actually missed this, I do have a Blood Shield. I do have a Blood Shield accessory, and that actually probably would be the priority. I would probably, number one priority, get her a Blood Shield accessory. What I opted for with this build was giving her um, two refresh rings, which is giving her a total of 10% chance to prevent her skill cooldown. That's good. I, I'd actually, I will switch her, now I think about it, to this Blood Shield ring. I think that's going to be more valuable overall, giving her an extra shield whenever she attacks. Just that extra buff to bait Mischief a bit more. Um, but refresh is really strong. It's that chance to, to just get another ally attack just back to back, which is huge. For the masteries then, you're actually very flexible. Not, there's not that many super good masteries. We are going to get our War Master for more damage. This is not necessarily needed, but it's going to mean that she actually does damage. Otherwise, she's not going to do anything. I think you could potentially send her down defense, right? Get her some extra resistance if you need to. And uh, get her some counter-attacky stuff. Like, that would be fine as well. You could totally do that too. Um, but I decided War Master for more damage is probably the better choice. But I think I'm open to suggestions, really. And then we've got her going down the left-hand side of the support tree, right? More HP and more healing and stuff like that, because why not? And then we've got uh, Cycle of Magic, a little bit of a chance to get her cooldown back. You know, a little extra addition to that reflex set. Uh, Lore of Steel's not doing much, but there's not much else to give her. And then Lasting Gifts, this is kind of important. Chance to extend the duration of any buff cast by her by one turn. As the Continuous Heals offer A1, because they only last one turn. Getting that extra turn up can actually add to a lot of extra buffs, especially if she gets back to her A2 and then extends them further. It adds up to a lot of extra self-healing, adds up to more buffs for mischief and all the rest. So here we go. Let's dive into the run. We've got this running at double speed. Um, you can see I've recorded it on my phone, <laughs> flip my phone over to plug it into the charger and boom, we're off. Um, this full run will be up as well for viewers. If you want to watch the full raw video, I'm trying to put as many up for uh, members of the channel as possible. It's something that I'm trying to do. Um, unfortunately, we, we got... You see, this is actually 44 minutes long. The actual run went a bit further than this, but my phone started to overheat and like get really laggy. So I stopped the recording. I was getting kind of worried, but we've got 44 minutes of the run. Uh, hopefully you'll forgive me, members. I think it's probably enough for the purposes of it. But what do we have going on in this team? What we have is a few fairly interesting things. So we've obviously got Inquisitor Shemail. He is in there pr protecting us from the Head of Torment. That's going to be important because we've got several AoE attacks with the ally attack of Lanicus. Uh, one thing you'll see when you're watching this footage, this is actually my Shemail who's built as a mischief tank. So he's sort of interfering with Lanicus a bit. Now you can see, for example, right there, mischief just hit Lanicus and she did the mischief tank job. Sometimes though, they will be hitting Shemail. You can maybe just about see it there. Shemail does have a blood shield accessory. So that's part of how he's going to get ahead of Lanicus and start mischief tanking as well. And I think that's actually fine. You can actually run the two together and it's, it's kind of good in fact, because it does open up Lanicus's A3 if you do ever want to use it. Um, it's just not super worth using unless you really need that increased attack since um, it, it sort of interferes with reflex set as well if you start using your A3. But it's just something to note. We've got Ugo for that decreased defense and block buffs, also some nice healing. Uh, and then one of the really nice things we've got going on here, Ursula the Mourner, really underrated champ, amazing champion for Hydra, increased attack for us, increased defense, strengthen for us, decreased attack for the enemies and revive. The thing about Ursula is that her cooldowns, especially on that increased defense and strengthen, is really long. She's got very long cooldowns. So you can see, I'm trying to move the thing a little bit so you can see the buffs on Lanicus a bit easier. That's where that in, uh, buff increase duration from Lanicus becomes very helpful. It gives us a much more consistent coverage of that increased defense and that strength. And on top of that, we have Mother Cybell in the lead, giving us a speed aura. Uh, she's got a great A1 as well. Very nice synergy there with Inquisitor Shemail. This gives her so many turns. She is laying in the decreased speed, so we can really start running rings around this Hydra. And um, yeah, then she also she can also do some mischief tanking stuff with her A3, saving uh, Ugo. Ugo's in a Guardian set, I believe, so saving Ugo. No, she's not in a Guardian set, never mind. Uh, she's in a Relentless set, that's right. But 
basically saving champions when they start to get nuked down a little bit. And um, yeah, she also gives us that increased defense that we can also extend with Lanicus. And uh, yeah, then Geomancer, final champion. And he's giving us those burns. Now, the cool thing is that Mother Cybel and Geomancer both have very good A1s. Decreased, def uh, decreased speed and decreased accuracy on their A1s and their AoE hits, proccing those AoE Warmasters. So they, they don't trigger every time from Lanicus because it is three random allies, but there's a good chance that it will, and it will add up to a lot of extra damage. Uh, Ursula is obviously the worst one to trigger an ally attack from. That's not going to do anything much for us. But the other champions are all pretty good to trigger ally attacks. Gives us a lot more leeches with Ugo, which is safety. And all the rest, so you can see, we're like 17 turns in right now. And we're pumping out a really good amount of damage. And guys, I can tell you for a fact that this team, we're running on hard right now. This is my team for hard. I put Lanicus in and I was super impressed by it. Like we go even further into the run. And one of the things that like was really impressing me with this team and this run was that it's just so consistent. It was so, so consistent. We were just getting through everything, no problem. Just continually pumping out damage, pumping out damage. And really the only place where we started to run into danger, like look at that ally attack on Head of Mischief. It goes all over the place. They start hitting random stuff, but it's just that, that contribution of all those random AOE hits does add up to something valuable. Very consistent team, very consistent. And here's the fun thing. Let me show you the ultimate result. The ultimate result was this, guys. We did on hard. It took almost an hour. This team just kept going. It just would not die. It would not die. We did almost 54 million damage here on hard, which is way, way above what we need. I'm actually pretty confident that this team could, could probably one key brutal as well. I would have to test it. Uh, it obviously gets a little more tricky in terms of getting people broken out of devours on time and whatnot. But I'm actually pretty confident that this team has that potential for one keying brutal. I mean, at the very least, if we're doing 54 million on hard, and like I said, this is not a um, this is not a what's the word? Not tempestuous, but it's not a fragile team. It's not a team that's living on the edge of something like a Mashald, like a Mashald who's doing tons of damage, but is like a bear scrape away from death at multiple points in the fight. This is a team that was super stable the whole way through. So I'm very, very confident that this could do well on Brutal. And yeah, it's just very impressive. Very impressive, guys. 10 million damage from Mother Cybele, 20 million from Geomancer. You can see Lanicus's damage is really bad. Yeah, she, she doesn't do almost any damage herself. She's actually the worst damage in the team. She's out damaged by Ursula because Ursula does lots of AoE War Master hits uh, with her A2. Um, so her damage is terrible, but what she does well is the boost to your team's damage. Who turn meter, extending buffs, and uh, ally attacks. It's that boost that really starts to get going. Like the ally attack on a decapitated head, it starts to add up. It starts to add up. Or alternatively like this, running her in a team with lots of AOE A1s starts to get really good. And there's there's more options. I think there's more potential for what you could do. I think definitely you could do different things as well. Like we could put in something like a Sachi, for example, with another AOE A1. I mentioned her in that video, MTG Jedi, instead of Ursula, give us that increased attack, more turn meter, AOE A1. And we could really start to do some spicy stuff. So there you go, guys. I wanted to, quick video, Lanicus the Chosen. Is she good for Hydra? Yeah, she's actually a huge hidden gem, hidden gem. Massive hidden gem. Really boosting your team a ton. I will say the reflex set is very important. Very important to have reflex set on her and to hit those stat thresholds of resistance, good speed, and you need the crit rate as well. Once you get that in though, what you get out of it, what you get out of it is a mischief tank that's, adding a lot to your team a lot of utility definitely a champion i'd overlooked 100 and i'm gonna i'm using her a lot more often now that gear is not going back on cold heart sorry cold heart you can deal with what you can have whatever gear uh this reflex gear staying on lanicus the chosen she's actually super super good guys thank you for watching i hope that you enjoyed and yeah maybe this will change some of those hydra teams for some of you that have lanicus there waiting for a purpose in the game there you go she's got one Guys, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye. I've lost my mouse to cancel the recording. I found it. Bye-bye.